I cannot understand this. This article that this YouTuber put on the screen has absolutely nothing to do with running faster. Yet it has 140,000 views. Hey guys, welcome back to Running and Research. This is just a quick video to analyze um, a popular YouTube video that was put up by uh, a content creator with a big following. And the title and the thumbnail of this video claimed that we could all run you know, three to eight percent faster. It was on Taryn's Motive Method hope I'm pronouncing that right. So pretty much the crux of this video states that we can run faster without any effort. Now that's a very attractive prospect. However, if you actually look at the studies that are linked in the video, it's really not at all what the research is pointing to. So let me explain this for you and what it actually means. So the video goes on to talk about cadence and stride length and how this is the formula for running speed. Pretty straightforward. So it would say that if you want to run faster, you either keep your stride length the same and increase your stride frequency, that is to say your cadence, or you take longer strides with the same cadence. So obviously either one of those is going to make you run faster. In the video, he literally states that the study that is on the screen right now, I'll put it up here, says that with the right run cadence, we can all run faster. So the first claim is that this is a new study. Um, if we actually look at the date published, it was 2016, which is seven years old now. And the research itself was probably conducted earlier in that year or even the year before and I can tell you now that a seven-year-old study is not considered new. Now what's actually more interesting is that if you read the title of this study it's an evidence-based videotaped running biomechanics analysis. If we just go type this title into Google I'll put it up here for you. We can see what the objective of this study actually is. So what this article by Sousa in 2016 is actually about how clinicians can go about making a video analysis of running biomechanics in order to help us understand and prevent injuries. There's literally nothing in this about running faster or any of the prescribed information um, from Taryn's video. I'm not sure if this is just a complete oversight or accident. Maybe they put the wrong title into the video. Um, but you think if you're reaching such a wide audience, 150, 160,000 subscribers, um, that you'd at least be putting in the right title for the study that you're gonna put up on the screen, especially when you go back and reference it multiple times throughout the video. So he then goes on to refer back to the article that was put up on the screen, which we've just talked about, to say that trained runners can actually take up to 3% more strides and that novice runners, which applies to most of us, can take up to 8% more strides. And how if we did this, um, we could potentially run faster with no extra energy cost. That would be great if the research that was put up on the screen actually had any relevance to this claim, but it simply doesn't. So the next thing that's interesting is that there is a link 
to a different study in the description. Now this actually isn't a scientific study. They didn't conduct their own research. What it is, is it is a review of loads of studies. Credit where credit is due. This review does actually contain some relevant information to what is being discussed in this video. So the review, I will put it up on the screen here so we can all see the title. It is by Moore and it is also uh, it has also been published in 2016, so again, not that new. So what this review is looking at is the modifiable biomechanics of running to improve our running economy. So that is to say what is actually in our control that we can change to run more efficiently. And the main things there are going to be our stride length, our cadence, and stuff like our foot strike. So in order to get to the scientific research that actually published results and that quotes 3% and 8%, now it doesn't quote faster, we'll get onto that later. I had to scroll through quite a lot of the, the review literature to find what study they referenced. Otherwise, it would just be taking information um, and an opinion from a review, which is just secondhand information. We're better going straight to the source. So that's what I did. For this study, again, I'll put it on the screen, is by De Rutter et al. And it was published in 2014. So it's even older. And it's nearly a, a decade old. Essentially, what they wanted to do was to find how close do trained runners and novice runners run to their mathematically optimal cadence. That is, how close is our self-selected cadence to our mathematically optimal cadence. So what they did was they got trained runners and novice runners to run at a constant speed. Nobody was running faster. They then imposed seven set stride frequencies, which the runners were forced to run at, and they used a metronome in order to get them to time their strides. What they did was they recorded the VO2, that is the oxygen consumption or energy costs from each different stride frequency at this constant speed in order to determine which stride frequency use the least amount of energy. And as I said, nobody was running faster. This was all at a constant speed. So what they found was that trained runners run at a deviation of about 3% from their mathematically optimal stride frequency. That is, they run much closer to what a mathematical model would say is most efficient for them. And that novice runners run at about an 8% deviation from this. So yes, of course, then novice runners do have more opportunity to improve their stride frequency or their cadence over time which will then cost them less energy expenditure. They won't waste as much energy at any given rate. It is not about running faster because that brings more variables into the equation. So great, Chris, but what can we actually learn from this? So what we can learn, as I said, is that we're all human. We're not robots that run at our mathematically optimal stride frequency. We run at a cadence that is typically comfortable for us and that it does actually deviate whenever we're fatigued or fresh. There is a difference when we settle into different cadence rates depending on this. However, the good news is, is that if you're a novice runner, you will improve your efficiency 
over time simply by running more and by getting more experienced. Yes, experiment with different stride frequencies, experiment with your cadence and your stride length, and you'll learn what is best for you by knowing that you're not as fatigued as you would be at a different stride length. Maybe it's too long, maybe it's too short. Maybe your, your cadence is too high, maybe it's too low, and you will learn to find the sweet spot. So the point is, get out there guys. Run often, run further, and you'll run well. If you enjoyed the video, like, comment, and subscribe. Really appreciate the support. Thank you.